I'm starting this episode on the result archive and points table screen. The latter is pretty important. There are 20 pro teams and 24 amateur teams and at the end of each season the bottom two teams in pro get relegated to be replaced by the top two amateur teams. In addition, rankings throughout the table determine what order teams get to pick their races for next season. So even though we're only mid-table and amateur, that's huge for us as it will allow us a greater variety of races to pick from next season. We've got two more months of racing to try and get ourselves into the top half of the amateur table. Meanwhile in pro, the Sky Race. Interesting thing about this, it's a mountain classic but it comes right after the Gazmia so a lot of the better climbers are off form so I think plus one would be enough to snipe it and indeed that's what Tarasov manages to do here. Our race this month is the Novo Beskov, a three-stage tour that's in theory set up for Perry. He has a minor fitness peak and is a two-star favourite, but depending on how hectic the end of this first stage gets, we have a few different cards we can play. It's going to be pretty uneventful until we get there, however, so just putting Campbell in the relay and fast-forwarding to then. And here is that climb now. A subtlety in multi-turn mountains is that the first move in is actually going to generate a lot of slipstream as long as there's not a steep ramp because you're riding off a fast three movement tile in but subsequent turns are going to be slower because now we're on the five node and also in this particular case there's a slightly steeper section cutting slipstream further. Nonetheless do manage to get my three contenders into the escape group whilst Campbell dropped voluntarily earlier on to save himself for tomorrow. Before the next move, most of the group reorders behind Pavlov but only Pavlov. I'm okay with this development though, I'm not racing for the stage win and even though Pavlov ultimately loses time as a result, he is the one rider of the three that I'm okay with losing time with because his lone point in recovery probably wouldn't have helped him on the final stage of this tour. Perry and Watson come through in a group of four, Korolev spending a billion gajillion attack points to secure the stage win. In fairness, this second stage is so short that Vladislav probably would have recovered to full anyway, but Watson has more energy when both riders are at 100% and the final day is likely to be a test of staying power rather than outright speed. In the meantime, a short climb here could be interesting, but a one-turner that offers three points of slipstream isn't going to drop anyone unless they choose to do so voluntarily, like I do with Campbell, so everyone stays together and we can move on to the sprint. This is a golden opportunity for Springvale Rollers, we are last to act. I decide Alexander Cook is in the best position, so Pavlov gets behind him and our other two riders will box out, but maybe I should have tried to box out Cook instead because he ends up winning the stage with Pavlov one attack point short of being able to overtake. Our first win still eludes us, but at least it's another second place. I also open up with Perry for third, since I know I'm going to recover those attack points anyway. This is significant because on points jersey tiebreak, Perry is now the provisional leader in the overall standings. I don't know if he can stay there, this stage finish doesn't necessarily suit him, but we do also have Watson to play who is on same time. It's going to be another pretty boring stage until the finish however, there's no intermediate sprints that would incentivize me to take the breakaway and we're just trying to manage this lone escapee so that he doesn't accidentally win the stage and blow up our GC hopes. No chance of that now however, in fact the peloton decides to go super hard just to catch the escapee now, but this move doesn't actually drop anyone important so we're heading into the last climb with a big group, it's relatively shallow and short, meaning in hindsight I probably should have prepared for a sprint rather than an attack. Pavlov's actually in the best position here to contest the stage victory, but once again he falls agonizingly short finishing second. 
and Perry and Watson trundling home without sprinting does cost me GC in Perry's case because Korolev and Medvedev end up winning the tiebreaker because the second tiebreak is your latest stage result. Or it may actually be the first tiebreaker. I'm not so sure if it's points or later stage result that counts first, but in either case, Perry finishes third when we perhaps could have won this tour. The silver lining is that this wasn't a scenario where the team or Perry needed the points, so it's a result that we can live without. This is our last month of scouting and we don't end up getting anyone of note. I ultimately decide to shortlist George Ross, but I don't think he's making next season's team. The pro calendar concludes with a major classic and tour happening concurrently. The Hegenberg round, cobbles and climbs and cobbled climbs, oh my! All kinds of riders can stand a chance depending on what the route is like. Meanwhile, the Arcana Tour, its unique characteristic is having a lot of time trials, four of them in a 14 stage event. Meanwhile, we have a three stage event, the Hills and Valley Tour. Watson's got a minor peak, maybe he can do something. There are surprisingly no mountain ratings on this first stage, despite how many little climbs there are in such a short period of time. You can be sure that because of that, however, it will be ridden very hard, and indeed, they already are going absolutely bonkers in the relay. Combine the risk of the peloton being dropped with all of the technical sectors on this stage, and I put all of my riders in the front group super early, Pavlov being the helper rider for this tour, because I still want to try and get Ward something, it's a minor fitness peak for him too, but Watson is the main guy here. And sure enough, the front selection is being made now, and we're still going to have three riders in it, but because we have the numbers in this front group, Tyler Campbell is now going to have to assume the role of second helper, and if we still need a helper after that, Ward will be the final helper for Watson. As it turns out, the 14% mountain has turned this into a team time trial for us. Theo Walter made the biggest move and Caruso will not relay to chase his own teammate. So we probably will need Ward after all, but I am still liking our chances. Let's see if we can make the catch. Walter can't quite make the finish line and Ward is going to stop on the exact same tyre with a max move. Campbell drops at this point, but Watson's going to be in a very small field with attack points to spare. Good chance to win the sprint or simply break away if he wants. It's going to be the latter because DCT doesn't have attack points left to reorder behind Watson. Caruso tries to relay the pair over, but does not momentum block enough nodes to avoid an attack from Watson that not only gets our first win of the playthrough, but also picks up time in the GC. So priority A, B and C from here will be to protect Watson's narrow advantage, which easier said than done because this second stage, very little let up and a sizable final climb. It's going to be ridden very hard, just like the last stage, because it's so short. It wasn't so hard as to drop the peloton super early, however, so we all arrive at the final challenge as one, and you'll notice I'm keeping Pavlov in P3 the entire time this stage, because I'm thinking of either a breakaway or contesting the stage win with him on day three. As for today, brutal move from the front group here, going to take a max move just to follow it, but crucially both Watson and Ward can, so Ward is still going to be able to enter the relay and help Watson if necessary, but as it turns out he doesn't need to, Walter makes a massive move with Watson still on his wheel, or more specifically Duval's wheel, and Duval probably had enough spare to reorder behind but he chose not to and I'm like well I'm not going to give you guys a 3B if you'd reorder behind me I would have gladly let you contest the stage win but it's mine now can't have it spend the extra attack point next time so we enter the final day with Watson in first Ward in third and hashtag don't mention the team Tricky little stage, but if we, as long as we follow wheels, the final climb isn't too steep, so we should be okay. And with no intermediate sprint or breakaway, I should once again skip to the part of the stage that actually matters. 
This move is going to cost the Peloton the rest of its attack points, so the next move to go is going to be the selection, and we managed to make it with all three of our riders. Campbell, of course, doesn't count. He was always going to drop at this point. Um, Pavlov did want to try and win the stage, but right now his higher priority is to relay for Warden Watson. Thankfully, those objectives aren't mutually exclusive, as he does want to be towards the front for the mountain sprint. Unfortunately, he can't actually sprint and instead gets out sprinted by everyone else. But for the second day in a row, we can just about follow the big move with Watson. Ward gets dropped, but not by enough to lose his third place. Watson manages to roll in and win the Hills and Valley Tour. We also won the green jersey in the process, meaning that whilst Herman Watson only got 100 points for the overall win itself, he also gets an additional 90 points from stage wins and jersey wearing bonuses. Needless to say, this results in him reaching level 4, which, as previously stated, it's going into attack per turn. The points also mean that Springvale Brawlers move up to 31st overall and 11th in Amateur League to end the season. Pretty good going. Of course, we'll eventually want to finish top 2 in Amateur to move on, and in theory that's doable next season since we'll have access to all the mixed league events, but more realistically it's a season 3 target as by then our main protagonists will have their second specialization level and we'll also have a much stronger team around them. Um, so see you for season two. I hope you've enjoyed watching.